Welcome to another video. We want to find all prime numbers such that the square of that prime number plus 2 is also a prime number. Now, anytime I get a question that says find all, my immediate assumption is there is none or there are some but they're not many that's why they ask me to find them or all of them behave the same way so a good way to test whether one of those um, guesses i made is right is just to test starting from the smallest number and that's what we're going to do let's get into the video So what I'm going to do is take the first few prime numbers and just see what I get, if it exists or does not exist. So the smallest prime number starting, um, we're going to say testing small primes. Okay, so 2 is a prime number. If p equals 2, then p squared plus 2 will be equal to... 2 squared plus 2, which is equal to 6. But 6 is not a prime number, so it does not satisfy the second condition. So we say not prime. Okay, so let's take the next prime number. We take p equals 3. And what do we get? We're going to get will be equal to 9 plus 2, which is 11. Oh, this one satisfies the condition. So now we found that 2 did not satisfy it, 3 satisfies it. Let's go to p equals 5. We go, um, we know that p squared plus 2 will be equal to 25 plus 2, which is 27. 27 is not a prime number. Um, let's take one more. Equals 7, we have p squared plus 2 will be equal to 49 plus 2, which is equal to 51. So it looks like this also is not prime, right? This is 17 times 3. This is 2 times 3. This is 9 times 3. So um, maybe we can keep trying, or we might as well just make a claim that the only time you're going to get a prime number is when the prime number is 3. You will not get another prime number on this side after squaring the number and adding 2 to it. That's the claim, and we're going to prove it. So with this claim that p equals 3 is the only solution, any other prime number greater than 3 will not produce a prime when you square it and add 2. And it's a very basic reason. Now watch this. Remember, in fact, this is not just for prime numbers. If you take any number and you divide it by 3, it is either 3 divides it, or there's a remainder of 1, or there's a remainder of 2. Well, if you take a prime number, clearly 3 does not divide any prime number. So the prime number, would, when you divide it by 3, will leave a remainder of 1 or a remainder of 2. Those are the only two options. It cannot be a remainder of 3, otherwise it would be divisible by it. So every prime greater than 3 is p equals 1 mod 3. That is, if you divide this number by 3, you have a remainder of 1, or it's going to be 2 mod 3. Any number, it's either it leaves a remainder of 1, I've said that multiple times, or a remainder of 2. But what I want to do is, I don't want to write 2 mod 3, because 2 is 1 less than 3, so we can say that it is p, this is the same thing as p equals minus 1 mod 3. This is another way of writing this, okay? Another way of writing 2 mod 3 is negative 1 mod 3. So we can say that generally if p is greater than 3, so, so for all p greater than 3, p is equal to plus or minus 1. 
and this is it. Okay, so watch this. If we square p, p squared will be plus or minus 1 squared. And that means p squared equals 1 mod 3. p squared plus 2 will be 1 plus 2 mod 3. And what is that? Well, let's write congruent, because I think that's going to be a problem. Okay? <laughs> okay? Congruent. Okay? And this is congruent to 0 mod 3. Remember, it is 0 mod 3 if it is divisible by 3. And that's it. So anytime you write, you take a, a, a prime number greater than 3, and you square it, and you add 2, the number is going to be divisible by 3. Clearly, every p greater than 3 is such that p squared plus 2 is a multiple of 3. Therefore, p squared plus 2 is prime. only if p equals 3. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.